the basic workflow for 3D modeling is one, draw a sketch. Step two, extrude the sketch from 3D form. And step three, repeat steps one and two until you are completed with your modeling. Using that basic method, you can create extremely complicated parts. Right now we're going to open up the app and we're going to create our first 3D object, which is going to be a simple rectangular prism. I have opened up my computer and I have gone onto the onshape.com website. Once I'm there, I can sign in. You should already have set up an account before you start this quiz. I've already signed on in this computer before, so basically all I have to do is press sign in and it will take me to my Onshape homepage. You'll see I have some stuff here already. The first time you open yours, you won't have any stuff here in the last open by me, but that's fine. We don't need to worry too much about that. This is our Onshape uh, document management page. This is where all your saved files will appear. Um, so we can actually create a new one here. I'm going to go create and I'm going to create a document. I'm going to give my document a name and my document name is going to be quiz one because I'm working on uh, this particular quiz and I'm going to go OK. You need to do the same thing here. You need to copy what I am doing. Once it loads the workspace, you'll see that it has a number of toolbars across the top, just like any app. It's also got uh, this features box down the side where your 3D objects will appear. Also your sketches will appear there. And over on here is this special tool for changing the viewport. Remember the workflow is to create a sketch and then extrude to 3D. We're gonna create a simple rectangular prism. We're not gonna to worry too much about what units of measurement we're using or the size of our box or our prism, we're just going to draw it. So we're going to click on a sketch tool here and we're going to create a sketch. The first thing it's asking me to do is to choose a sketch plane. I'm just going to choose this one here, which is the top one. You can see that the rectangle goes right round and we're looking at it from the top. Once I've collected that, it's now created sketch one. Uh, that's what it's called there. You can change its name. Let's just call it our prism. And that'll be our change to prism. And I'm gonna look at it from the top. So if I look at it from the top, I'm now going to draw a corner rectangle and just click here, let go of the button and click down here. I've now drawn um, a rectangle. I, so now that I've done that, I've finished my sketch. I'm gonna press the tick button here and it's going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go back to the view I was on, which is this little uh, corner of this little box here. And now I've got step one completed. Step one of our workflow is to draw a sketch. Step two is to extrude it to 3D. The extrude button is right next to the sketch button. Step one, draw a sketch. Step two, extrude to 3D. Let's do that now by cl clicking on uh, the extrude box, it wants you to select a face and sketch region to extrude. That will be our rectangle. So we're going to click on that. And you'll see that it's drawn a rectangular prism already. I can change the depth by dragging this up or down. Or I can type in the measurements here. You'll notice it's in inches by default. We'll have to change that in a later video. That's fine for me now. I'm going to press tick. We've now completed or created our first 3D object. The best way to control the view or the perspective that you're looking at your 3D object from is by using the 3D object control, view control port or control tool up here. You'll see that it actually has a representative cube in it and you can move it around by pressing on uh, various aspects of the box. For example, top will take you to the top. Now that I'm at the top, I want to go down to the corner. I can press the corner here, and I'm now looking at it from the left-hand side. If I want to look at it back from the way I came, I can actually highlight that little one there 
and it will take me back to that one there. I can also press these arrows around the outside and that'll slowly rotate it around that point there. So it's a good idea to keep your design in and around that point there. Sideways arrows will also rotate it around that point there, but that actually depends on the way that you're looking at it. You've also got these arrows here. I'm not quite sure whether I use that or not, but it does actually help you to look at it from a range of angles. Front, right and top are the best ways of looking at um, this. If these planes, these are called number planes or planes, uh, annoy you, uh, you can turn them off by right clicking and going hide all planes. To get them back again, you just right click and go show all. And that's how you manipulate your views and the easiest way in order to see what you're looking at in 3D. Remember, the workflow is to draw a sketch and then extrude to 3D. You need to understand where you can draw sketches before you draw sketches. There are two types of object on which you can draw a sketch. You can draw a sketch on a plane. This is the same as a number plane. If I was to actually look at this from a math mathematical point of view, that would be 0, 0, and this would be the y-axis, and this would be the x-axis when I'm looking at it. In fact, in 3D, this is the x-axis, uh, and this is going to be the z-axis because there is a third axis in 3D. I can draw a flat sketch on any flat plane, or I can draw it on the flat face of any object. My cube has a number of flat faces, so I'm going to press on sketch, and I'm going to draw on the front face of my cube. Once I've drawn on that front face, I can press the front tool to bring me in, and this time around, I'm going to use the spline tool. I like the spline tool because it's a curvy line. So basically if I go from there to there it doesn't look too curvy and I'm using click and click. I'm not using click and drag but click and click and you can see the third click it starts to curve. So I can draw some quite nice smooth sort of shapes here in order to make that happen. Now that I've got that sketch um, done I can then make it 3D but you can draw it also. So I've drawn it on the face. I can also, if I go back to here, draw another sketch over here. So you can create a new sketch on any plane that exists as well. That's the top plane. So I'm gonna look at it from the top view. And this time I'm going to draw a couple of circles. I'll draw three. So once I finish that sketch, I'm going to press tick. So I can draw on the surface of any face of a 3D object, or I can draw on a plane. So in the last section, we drew two sketches. We drew one sketch on the plane, and we drew one sketch on the face. I don't want to see the sketch that's on the plane. I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hide it. I could delete it by right clicking on it and using the delete function, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, that can create complications. It's better just to hide sketches rather than actually deleting them. So remember the workflow is to draw a sketch and then make it 3D. Draw a sketch and then make it 3D. We've already got our first sketch, so we're gonna make it 3D. We're going to make it 3D by adding to our prism. We're going to make our prism something more than just a prism. We're going to use this base here, and instantly it brings it out, the default amount, which is one inch. Um, it's going to be in inches. We're going to change that later, but one inch. And I can drag this in and out, or I can type it in here. Once I've got that in place, uh, there are other functions in here but we're just gonna worry about doing this and it's going to make this part slightly bigger. It's going to be still part of this object, but it's going to be slightly bigger. 
So we're now going to press the tick box and let's do that again with a different shape. So let's go sketch and this time I'm going to draw it on this face over here and I'm going to use the letter A and I'm going to drag out an area about that size and I'm going to put in the letter A and press tick. So you can see I've got the letter A on my box. I'm going to press tick here and that's a finished sketch. You can see now I can highlight that section there and I should be able to extrude it out. I'm going to zoom in using my mouse, the scroll wheel on my mouse or two fingers on my touchpad dragging up and down will scroll it in and I'm going to basically press the extrude button now that I've got that sketch of that A. I'm going to click inside the A and I'm going to pull it in and out as needed and press tick. So you now see I've got the letter A. If I press this button again, it'll take me out to my view and you can see I've got a 3D added object of the letter A. So you could make your, um, your old school little baby blocks uh, this way by creating a prism uh, and putting letters on it and numbers on it and little pictures on it and 3D printing that out. Not only can we add to our box, but we can take away from it. We can put indentations on it. We can subtract. So our workflow, remember, is to create a sketch and then extrude. So let's create a sketch up here. You don't have to create the same sketch as me or even on the same face. I'm going to do it on the top just because it makes it easier for you to see. And this time around, I'm just going to drill a circular hole through the top. I'm going to go from about there to about there and press the tick button to finish my sketch. I'm now going to press the extrude button on that and I'm going to instead of add, I'm going to choose remove and instantly it pulls the hole through. I'm going to pull my hole all the way through so it's going to remove and it's going to remove to a depth uh, which is greater than the size of the box and I'm going to press tick. I now have a hole that goes right through my box. I'm going to rotate around uh, this side here and look at this sketch. Let's actually do another one now. I'm going to do a sketch on that surface over there or that face there uh, and I'm going to use um, a polygon tool. There's one there and this time oh, number of sides, five Okay, so it's a pentagon, and this time I'm going to just push it through using the extrude tool. And I'm going to extrude only a small amount of the way through. And then I'm going to press tick. Remember, I see there I didn't press subtract. I have left it at add. I meant to subtract it. So what I can do is I can go back into that by double clicking in and clicking on the remove button and then pressing tick. So you can see that you can edit extrusions and subtractions that you've already done. And that concludes our first tutorial on developing your skills at working in 3D space. Have a play and see what you can create with your rectangular prism.